Okay, the App Engine Database or Data Store. Let's see how that works. Uh, so what I have here is uh, this is the whole app. It's a very small app. Uh, you can see, you know, I'm outputting HTML right here from the response. Uh, you should not do that. You should use templates, but it's easier to explain it when I do it this way. So I have a little get. I got a post. The get puts out a little HTML page. Uh, the HTML page looks like this, right? And here you see it. So it's just a title with a little form with a post method. Uh, the input text area with the name of post and the submit button. And so when the user goes in and enters his comments, my comments, hit submit. Then you see that result in a post to the same page. And uh, which, of course, takes us to here, a post to the same page. And there it just says you entered, and we get the self request dot post uh, from remember the post here matches this name. So we end up printing whatever the user typed in. Now we're at this page here. You notice, and remember, if you're in this page and you try to reload, it's going to try to read the post, right? Which is annoying. People don't like that. Um, so you know, to get out of that, you have to click over here, hit enter, and then you end up doing a get on the page. Uh, okay, but now you see it, uh, the, our app completely forgot about what the user typed in. So what we want to do is have the user, uh, I'm sorry, have the app remember and store all those comments. So let's go over here. We're gonna uh, starting with the getting started guide. You know, they have a little example here of using the data store. The first thing you need to do is that. Copy that and paste that. So we have this import. Whoops. Um, we have to go from that. We're going to import that. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that's fine. We actually want that. And then we're going to build our class comment, uh, which is going to extend the DB model. Right. And that is just like the greeting class, which extends the DB model. And uh, it has various properties. Like in their case, they have an author, a content, and a date. I'm just going to start with a content, and uh, which is going to be a string. So this is going to basically, this is saying this is the equivalent of uh, a table called comment with one field called the content. So we're going to have many, many comments in the database. Uh, each comment is going to have some content. So, okay, well, have, let's try to put some stuff in there. What's going to happen is the user types it in, then he goes here, and this is the page where here here is the actual content that I want in the post. So I want to put that in the database instead of just writing it out. How do I do that? I'm going to say, you know, the comment is comment, con the content equals self dot request oops, self dot request uh, dot get something more request dot get and uh, I want the post right so that's what the user wanted I should make that a self oops and then um, so what this does is it creates a new comment with the content whose value is whatever the user typed in the, you know, in the post right here. And uh, I'm not done though because I then have to uh, write it to the database. And that's how I do that. So this is actually right to the data store. If you don't do that, it will not get stored. So this kind of creates it in memory, and the other one stores it, right? So there we go. Let's test that. I'm gonna go over here, reload. Right? Nope. We're not doing. We're gonna post still. So okay. So I just did it again. Now I'm gonna enter. You know, my first test. Submit that you enter first test we stored in the database or, or did we? So how do I know? Uh, well, if you go to the Google App Engine Launcher, you click on the SDK console there. That's going to open up a window like that on their uh, 
localhost underscore h a h slash admin then you can click on your data store viewer here and it should list an entity kind of comment in this case you can click list entries and it will list everything that's been stored and you can see indeed we did manage to store something in our database um, and it's got the content of my first test so it's working we're, we were able to store it you can see there's also a key associated with it there's also an id associated with it and a key name associated with it those are all by default uh, the ID gets assigned automatically like a number and you know, it's going to be increasing and different from for all your entities of kind comment um, So this is nice. It's very useful to go here and be able to view your database uh, As you are debugging your app So now you can go back to your app here and you say awesome. So I did write it to the database um, so um, what I want to do now is uh, instead of you know just saying you enter this, I want I don't like this. I want to send the user back to the original page, and then list all the posts that every that have been added to the database in that page. So the first thing is I need to send the user back to that page. You know after writing. So first I want to I want to still write this to the data store. Uh, but then I want to redirect the user uh, to that page and I don't want to write anything and this is a very common way of handling the posts right um, so let's, let's just look at that I'm gonna go from here as a second pose I'm gonna submit that and you can see it doesn't look like anything happened over here but down here you can see we did a post and then that post redirected us so we ended up doing a get again on this get slash uh, on the same page right so the local post uh, the post to slash here resulted in a 302 that's the redirect that we did self the redirect and that told us to go uh, do the, the slash to do a get on slash uh, it says location go here right so it says go back to slash and then the browser did a get on that slash and uh, that was okay but uh, you know I'm still not listing the results so let's change that now what we want to do is before I show him the, the form I want to show all the previous responses so that means I got to get all those previous responses the way i do that is i can create a query self.query.comment.all so this is a query that is going to re return all the comments and um, so therefore in query and this is how i go through the comments right and then i can go self.response.write and uh, let's write each comment in a p within a p uh, self dot comment now remember self dot comment is gonna be oops so I forgot the self here it's very easy to forget those selves so the comment is going to be actually an element in the database so if I did this let's just do that and reload it. Um, right. so it doesn't look good um, we can go over here and you can see you know that's what we got printed out uh, and uh, that's because that's the comment itself you don't really want the comment which is an element in the database you want comment dot content remember and that's what the user typed in uh, Let's try that reload the page and then you see my first test and then second post then i can go over here and enter third post submit that and now you see it says my first or second post third post and so on and fourth post submit that and that's working pretty nicely right so this is the way you fetch data 
from the database is using the the class name, the table name, or the entity name is what the official name is, uh, and doing dot all, and then you can uh, iterate over all of them. You can also, as you get more sophisticated, you can do dot all dot filter, right? And you can look up in the documentation about that, but the filter will let you filter. Like if you have more properties, you know, content, name, address, or whatever, and you want it to only get the ones that you know belong to a particular user, or all the ones that are before a particular date, or all the ones that start with a particular letter, that's where the filter comes in, right? And if you know SQL, uh, there is also another way to do this with a JQL, which is very similar to SQL, although. I recommend you don't. I recommend you stick with the methods because you don't want to have code inside a string, and that's what you end up doing with the JQL. Um, so that's it.